Well, hello, Internet, and welcome to my MongoDB tutorial. Over the course of this tutorial series, you're going to learn pretty much everything you could ever want to know about MongoDB. I'm going to show you how to install it on both Windows as well as Macintosh. I'm going to show you how to run JavaScript in the shell. I'm going to cover pretty much every command you could ever want to know about. I'm going to show you how to insert, update, and delete pretty much anything. I'm going to cover math, array functions, querying, aggregation, replication, sharding, and using MongoDB with Node.js. So I'm going to jump over and show you how to install everything on Windows as well as on OS X. Now if you are on Windows, what you're going to want to do is go to mongodb.org and go to the downloads part of the website and you're going to, want to click on the Windows tab and more than likely you're going to want the 64-bit version and you're going to click on download. Whenever you do, it's going to ask you, do you want to run this? Say yes indeed and click on it and then this little guy is going to pop up here for you. You're going to click on next going to click in here that you accept the terms, click on next, get the complete version, click on next, and then click on install. After a while it's going to be completely installed and you can click on finish. Now what you're going to want to do is open up your command prompt. It's probably not on your desktop, but open up your command prompt from the start menu down here. And you're going to want to change to your regular C directory and you need to make a data directory. So you're going to type in MD data and then you're going to type in MD data backslash DB to create all those directories you're going to need. Now you're going to want to work your way through to find the actual MongoDB server and it's more than likely in your program files. So you're going to go to that part of your website and you can click on DIR to show everything inside of there. Here's the server. You're going to want to change to that directory next and then you're going to want to change to the 3.0 or 3.1 depending upon when you're watching this video directory, whatever shows up there. And then after that you're going to want to change to the bin directory which is located in 3.0, that directory right there. And you're going to see all the different executables you're going to have available for you. But you're basically going to use mongo.exe and mongod.exe to run everything. So and then what you're going to want to do inside of your command prompt is type in mongod.exe and that is going to start up your database and get everything ready. And then in another command prompt, keep the other one open, don't close it, create another command prompt, and in this one you are going to type in mongo.exe, and this is going to be the shell where you're going to be working with everything. Now what you're going to want to do is put all this inside of your path. So what you're going to want to do is open up the, your control panel, then go to system security and system, click on advanced system settings, and then you're going to want to get this directory name that's over here. So it's program files MongoDB server 3.0. And this guy over here, which is your advanced tab, make sure you click on that. And you're going to want to click on environment variables. Then from the environment variables section, you're going to click on path user variables for Derek Banis, as well as path, which would be system variables. And then you're going to want to paste inside of there C colon backslash program files slash mongodb server 3.0 backslash bin backslash. Okay, and make sure you put a semicolon inside of there. And then after you do that, click on OK, and everything's ready for you. Now for Macintosh users, we're going to be using Homebrew. So go to brew.sh if you don't already have it installed, and select this great big giant line of text right here, paste it into your terminal, and hit enter. After you do that, you're going to want to go and open up a terminal on your Mac and type in brew update and a whole bunch of things are going to update. Then you're going to type in brew install mongodb and mongodb is going to install itself. And then you're going to go and make the data directory just like Windows users did. You are, however, going to have to do this as root. So type in sudo make directory dash p forward slash data forward slash db. And also make sure on Windows that you are logged in as the administrator. Hopefully all the Windows people didn't skip ahead. But back on Mac, also type in password and hit enter. Then what you're going to want to do is make sure that you can use MongoDB no matter who you are. So we're going to type in who am I and that's going to pop back your username. Type in sudo change owner to your username and then change that to the data directory. Once again type in your password, hit enter. Then we're going to start up our server by typing in mongo d, no x, e, x, e in this situation. Then you're going to open up a new tab in your terminal. Again, don't close this guy down. You're going to have to open up a new tab. And whenever you do, you're going to type in mongo and your shell is going to be ready to go. And that's all you need to do to install on Windows as well as Macintosh. Now I'm going to jump over and start writing some code. And if you wondered how you would open up a new tab, you're just going to go in here inside the terminal and shell and new tab and there we are. 
and everything is exactly the same that I do here on Macintosh as well as on Windows and in the situations in which things are not the same I'm going to show you how to change them so that they are the same all right so I'm going to type in Mongo D start up the server there everything is running and then over here I'm going to type in just simply Mongo and there is our shell that we're going to be using I'm going to show you here in a second how to get rid of this now whenever you're creating your database names just make sure that you do not include any spaces in the names or forward slashes or backslashes and this is on Windows and Mac period stars different brackets quotes or symbol question mark dollar sign or colons okay so do not use those everything else you can pretty much use however and what's kind of neat is we're going to be able to run JavaScript code directly inside of our shell I'm gonna make this go back here so we could do something like function and let's say we have times two and we receive a number for this function and in exchange we return whatever the number is that they pass inside of here times two and close that off we're then going to be able to directly in our shell go times two pass in five for example close that off and you're going to see that it gives you a result just something neat to know about we're also going to be able to show all of our databases by going show dbs like that and it's going to show all of the databases we currently have installed we should also show our current database by just typing db and there you can see we're using the test database and that's always going to be true unless we change it if we want to create a new database we just type in use and I'm going to say test one in this situation but you can use any if you don't already have a test one database it's going to create it for you just an empty database so now we're using the test one database now there are many different ways to work with documents as you're going to see in this first one however what I'm going to do here is I'm going to create a MongoDB document and then insert it into our database and I'm going to set it up kind of like you would set it up inside of JavaScript I'm going to go colon and I'm going to type in a name here and don't worry about skipping to different lines if you want to keep everything neat so let's just go and create like an employee type of database here email and you can also come in here and create dates so if I wanted to have this be the current date that I'm entering this document I would just type in new date like that and then close that off and there we go you can see it right there now to insert it into my database I'm going to type in DB test one which is the name of my database and insert and Derek and that is inserted as you can see it returned one and then if I want to find all the information I have inside of my database I'm going to type in DB test one once again test one's the name of the database and then find and you can see right there that it pops back Derek Bannis and all that other information we could also come in here and type in pretty at the end and you can see that it lays everything out a little bit nicer on our screen. Now let's say that I decided I wanted to have my employee Derek Bannis have a list of references in an array installed inside of it. Well I could just go Derek Bannis like this and references and say that this is a array. There's an array and now what I can do is come in and update that database by test one and then specifically let's say that I wanted to update the document inside of here that has the name of Derek Bannis assigned to it. I can do that and say that I want to update based off of the changes in the Derek Bannis object that I've created right here. You can see that it matched one and it modified one so you know that that all went through. Now what I can do is do another find on this and you can see that the references array is also there as well. We would also, of course, be able to come in here and delete information by going, again, test one, and remove. And then specifically, we have to find a document to remove. So we're going to say we want to remove the document that has a name of Derek Bannis. And you can see that it did remove, but if we want to verify, you can go and type in find and see that it's all, nothing's there. And it's also important to know that there are numerous different data types that we can save into our document. So we have null, and null could be something like name, and this is automatically going to be done for us. We have name and null, which means it doesn't have a value at all. So that's one type of data that we can store in a document. We could also store booleans, and it's important to see exactly what it looks like whenever we're installing these in regards to where to use quotes and when not to use quotes. For example, if you're storing a Boolean value inside of a document, you do not put quotes around true. We also have number types, and these are by default 64-bit float numbers. 
and with these guys if we were installing them we could do something like height and 6.25 so once again we're not going to put quotes around those numbers we can also store strings of course so string and a string is basically just going to be address and you can see we have to put a colon between these to match these up the keys to the values address being the key and the value being on the right side of the screen here and this will be main street and this has nothing to do with installing the address this the key value pairs of address and 123 main street as you're going to see i just put that there to show you that that's a string we're also going to be able to store arrays of information so let's say we had a grades array that we wanted to install inside of here. We could do so by just putting these brackets inside of here and saying something like A, B, F. But also we're going to be able to store multiple different data types inside of our arrays with Mongo. So we could also go in here and say 234 is a grade. Then we're going to close that off with the proper bracket and the curly bracket. So that's one way we can go and insert an array into a document. We're also going to be able to put date objects inside of here like you saw before so we could have higher date and if we wanted it to be whatever the current time is right now that's all we'd need to do. I'm going to show you in a second how to put other dates in. We could also store regular expressions so let's say that we wanted to install a street regular expression that we plan on using for some reason or another. We could come in here and do just that. And I'll get a little bit more into regular expressions here in a moment. And there's just a basic regular expression for matching a street address. And if you don't know anything about regular expressions, of course, I have a tutorial on them. So that's how we would install a regular expression in a document. We would also be able to in store embedded documents inside of documents. So let's say we wanted to create a document called info that's going to have another document inside of it that's going to have name and let's say this is Sue Smith don't know what Sue Smith's doing, but make sure that you close off with both curly brackets if you want to install a document inside of a document. We're also going to have object IDs, which are going to be unique for every document that we have. Those are going to be automatically created for every single object you create inside of MongoDB. And just so you know, there are 12 byte IDs, and I'll get a little bit more into that here in a moment. And let's go in here and actually create one. So let's go random data is equal to, and we could come in and say name, and let's put a null value inside of there just so you can see that null value. You can then go over 20 and give that a Boolean value of true. Skip over to the next line. Let's go in and create a height. And just to skip ahead, we'll throw in a big integer, a big long, big giant numbers. You can put very large numbers inside of MongoDB. An address, a grade array, higher date, street, regular expression, just like you saw before, and a document inside of a document. And you can see that that was created for us. And now if we want to go and insert this into our document, we can just go test one, insert, and random data inside of there. And you can see one was inserted. And if we jump back here and do a find, you're going to see all that information was inserted into our database. Another thing that's kind of helpful is you'll be able to type in help, and you'll be able to receive a list of MongoDB commands that you can go and play around with. I'm going to cover all of them, though, here, so you don't need to worry about that right now. But another thing that's kind of useful to know here, let's say that as I'm typing in these commands, you want to know a little bit more about those commands. If you type in the command without parentheses, like if you want to learn more about what the find function actually does, you can type in DB test one and find without the parentheses. And you can see all the different code right here that's involved in that function and exactly what it does. So that's kind of neat if you want to see the inner workings of how Mongo works. And then finally, exit would jump us out of the shell altogether. But we don't want to jump out of the shell because we're having too much fun. Let's jump back into the shell. And I promised that I was going to make it so that you could get rid of that number of files is 256, you know, the soft R limits error. Now let's go and get ready with that already. So let's, let's jump out of here first, jump out of the shell, jump back over here. If you want to close this down, just go control C and that shuts the Mongo D server down. And to get rid of that error, we're just going to go U limit. This is an error that we only Mac users would have. We're gonna go ulimit-n 2048 and mongo d like this. And you're gonna see that that error is going to go away if we come over here and go mongo, see, no more error. So that's a quick way to get rid of that. And that's once again, just for Mac users. Now you're also gonna be able to execute JavaScript scripts inside of MongoDB.
inside of the directory that I am currently inside of, which you can find by the way by going exit like this and pwd, say I'm in that directory right there. I'm going to write some JavaScript code and save it there so that I'll be able to work with it. And what this is going to do is I'm going to create a function here called select db and it's going to receive a port as well as a database. And if a port is not supplied, I'm going to use this port right here, which is the default MongoDB port. And if a database is not supplied, I'm going to use the test1 database. And whenever we do run this function, it is going to make sure that we are logged in on the port defined as well as the database name, unless something else was put inside here, and it's going to return that database connection. So we're going to want to go in here, and in this situation, I'm going to put it in my Derek Banis directory, and I'm going to let it be define select db.js like that. Jump back into the terminal or command prompt if you are on Windows. And I'm going to log back into Mongo. Now if I want to load that script inside of my shell, I just go load and then I go define select db.js and true pops back. That means it found it. Um, remember, I have to be in the same directory as this file. So if you're getting any error, that's the reason why you got that error. And now what's neat is I will be able to come in here and just go select db and it's automatically going to log me into the test one database. And if I just type in db like that, you can see that yes, indeed, I am logged into the test one database. And I, of course, could change it to just the regular test or whatever. Just use that function there just as a demonstration. So for example, I'd be able to come in here and call this function also by going select db and typing in 27017 and test instead and you can see that I'm logged into the test database now instead. But let's just go back here and change this to the regular one and you can see that I'm in test one which is where I want to play around with. Another file that you're going to want to play around with here that is going to execute every single time you run your shell command is what is called the mongorc.js file and on Windows this is going to be in your C directory, users, or this is where you're going to save it, Derek Bannis, or it's not going to be Derek Bannis for you obviously, <laughs> mongorc.js, so that's if you're a Windows user, however if you are a Macintosh user, you're going to want to store this inside of your main user directory, so it's going to be user and Derek Bannis or whatever your name is and you're going to want to store it inside of here. However, you can see here that this file shows up but it's grayed out. That is because I forced normal hidden files to show on my Macintosh and if I want to show you how to do that inside of your terminal, let's go in and just open up a new tab and to show hidden files on a Macintosh, you're going to type in defaults, write, com, apple, finder, apple, show all files, yes, and hit enter and that's going to show hidden files so you'll be able to directly go in there and mess around with that file. And now I'm going to show you how to protect your database as well as how to set up an editor so that it will be able to work with MongoDB. What we're going to do is we're going to open up the mongorc.js file which we just created once again in our users directory whether you're on Windows or Mac. And pretty much what you're going to do is create a new function inside of here called protectdb and just type out everything that we have here. I have a link to all the code in the directory and that's going to allow our database to be protected so that the database isn't droppable or whatever. And I'm also going to show you how to customize your prompt inside of MongoDB. All you're going to do is you're going to type in prompt equal to and here I created a function that is going to check whether my database is undefined. If I am in a database it's going to pop back whatever the name of the database is. If not it's going to type in nodb meaning no database as my prompt. Otherwise what it's going to do is it's going to return the database name with a space and then operation count and it's also going to show the number of executions that I've put inside of my terminal. So if you can see right here I am inside of Mongo and it's going to show my current database right there with a space between it and then the current operation or line inside of my shell as it executes. So that's how easy it is to customize your prompt and once again those commands are exactly the same on Windows as well as on Macintosh. Now if you'd like to be able to edit shell operations in an external editor which is really awesome once again in your Mongo RC file you, on a Macintosh you're just going to type in editor is equal to vim like that and I'll show you how to use that in a second and if you're on Windows we're going to use sublime text instead I trust you can install sublime text and in that situation you're just going to type in c colon backslash backslash program little tilde one backslash backslash sublime little tilde one like that and then you're going to want to save that file but 
once again that's Windows this is Mac I'm using Mac right now everything else is the same so I'm going to save that then I'm going to open up the terminal where I have MongoD running and I'm going to shut that down and then I'm going to restart it then I'm going to jump over and I'm going to type in Mongo and I'm in the shell again now what's really cool is I'd be able to come in here and do something like type in Susie Smith is equal to like that and then I could just type in edit Susie Smith it's going to open up the Vim editor for me and how we're going to use this is I'm just moving with my little arrow key here. I'm going to hit I whenever I want to insert some information and I could do something like putting in Susie Smith's address and then to exit out of here we're just going to hit the escape key and then down here we're going to type in colon WQ and on Sublime Text on Windows you're just going to save just like anything else. Then you can see if I then come in here and go Susie Smith like this and hit enter it's going to show the updated address. Well, that's all I have time for today. In the next part of the tutorial, I'm going to cover inserting, updating, deleting documents, and a whole bunch more. So please leave your questions and comments below. Otherwise, till next time.